Praise the Lord. Good evening, church. And I welcome you to Freedom Night. Praise the Lord. Let's all stand this evening. And if you are joining us for the first time, welcome tonight. Hallelujah. We are happy to have you. Praise God. So let's close our eyes and bow our heads today. This awesome. Thank you, Almighty God, for this day that you have made, O oh God. Lord Jesus, Lord, I pray and ask that you come in, O oh Father. Come, Holy Spirit, Lord, we need you, O oh God. We need your presence, O oh God. Oh Lord, I pray and ask that you cleanse, O oh God. Cleanse this room, cleanse our hearts and minds, O oh God. Forgive us of our sins, O oh God. Cleanse us of all unrighteousness tonight, dear God. I pray, O oh God, every praise will be pleasing to you, O oh God. I pray that we will be pleasing to you tonight, O oh God. O oh God, I pray the praises will go up and the blessings will come down tonight, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, we need you tonight we need you holy spirit to come fill this room tonight let the glory oh god overfill this place tonight oh god in the name of jesus lord we are here to praise you we are here to exalt you oh god we're here to hear from you tonight oh god what your word is saying tonight oh father we need all of you tonight dear god we bless your holy name oh god i pray oh god you anoint your worship team oh god i pray the praise will come forth oh god through them oh lord and that your praise will arise oh God and the enemy will be scattered tonight in the name of Jesus oh God we pray for the victory over this house tonight oh God in the name of Jesus God anoint your servant as you bring forth your word oh Holy Spirit have your way in him oh God and through him tonight oh Father in the name of Jesus I pray there be healing in your room tonight there will be miracles signs and wonders in your name we are about to receive from you tonight we are ready oh God have your way in this place tonight this Savior, in your name I pray. Amen and amen. Let's worship our King tonight. Hallelujah.
so good, so good. Yes, you are, yes, you are, yes, you are, yeah. Sing, you are good all the time, all the time. Yes, you are good. Sing, you are good all the time, all the time. Yes, you are good. You are good all the time, all the time. You are good. Sing, you are good all the time, all the time. Yes, you are.
victory tonight. Can anybody declare your victory tonight? Hey. Yeah. Can somebody sing? Now all of my fear I will turn into praise. I'll shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every shell. Somebody give me praise. Now all of my fear, I will turn into praise. I'll shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I've got disappointment and break every chain. Now all of my fear, I will turn into praise. I'll shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I've got disappointment and break every chain. Now all of my fear, I will turn into praise. I'll take off despair.
Everybody give him praise. Oh, have your way in us, Jesus. Come have your way in us, Lord. All we need is you, Jesus. that's in front of me will be thrown into the midst of the sea can somebody sing and through it all through it all my eyes are on you and through it all through it all it is well
are worthy, oh Lord. Hallelujah. I say whatever you're going through tonight, our God, we can trust in him tonight. We can put it into his hand tonight, knowing that he's going to answer it. It is well. You can say it is well with my soul because we have Jehovah God. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is everything you could ever need. Just call on his name tonight. Will you call on the name of the Lord tonight? For he is so worthy. He is so holy and he is so mighty to save tonight. We exalt your holy name, Jehovah God. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord, for He is good. He is so good. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And if you're through tonight, you can have your seats. Glory. Our God is so wonderful. It's so good to see each and every one of you here in the presence of the Lord tonight to worship Him. Did you worship the King tonight? Woo! He is so good. I just love being in His presence. It's so wonderful to come into his presence to worship him. Hallelujah. So tonight we have one testimony tonight. One testimony. And this person has been asking me like for three weeks now and I keep on forgetting. <laughs> and he reminded me tonight. <laughs> so, and I have one more room for one more. So if you would love to share testimony tonight, you can show me by the lifting of your hands if you have one. And the Lord had ordered you to do that tonight. Maybe when this other person is testifying, just let me see your hand. So tonight we have Elisha Ramdial, and he is coming to greet you and to share testimony tonight. The Lord can use the small ones to share a word. Praise God. Good evening, church. Um, so I want to thank the Lord for what he has been doing these past couple weeks and weeks before. So... It was a uh, Wednesday after the church. I started getting a fever. My skin started to feel hot. My temperature was rising up. I went home early that day. And then the next day at school, the fever started coming back after that. Me and my mom prayed after school. Well, I prayed during school. And I knew the Lord can do it, but nothing's too big for me. Amen. So when I was coming home after I had the car, the Lord, the Lord healed me. The fever was gone. The Lord has blessed me with so many stuff in my life that he could heal just one little person, and that was me. Praise the Lord. The Lord could heal one little person if you just call on the name of the Lord. And this is not the first time that I've seen God do it for him. He had prayed. We prayed so many times, and the Lord answered. And the Lord can use the little ones in the house to do that. Just trust in the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Is there anyone else who would love to share a testimony tonight? No? Okay. So let's move on. Oh, come on, come on. Good evening, everyone. Um, I just wanted to testify about how God healed me. And um, for the past two weeks before my chest was in a lot of pain and I didn't quite know why. And um, there would be times where I would be sitting in my room and it would get so sharp that I couldn't breathe and I would get scared. And I would hear voices in my head like, oh, like you're gonna die, like you can't do anything about it. And I told whatever that was, like, do you know who my God is? And I started praying and the pain went away and um, the next day I came back and it was worse until one prayer meeting, I was here crying onto the Lord and um, I felt the pain and it was really bad. And I just got on my knees and I asked God like, please deliver me from this. I don't know what's going on. Until Pastor Jay said that somebody was feeling a physical pain and that pain is going to leave and it's not gonna come back again. And as soon as he said that, the pain left and I haven't felt it since, praise God. And I just wanted to say that whatever you're going through, to trust in the Lord because he can deliver you from anything. And I just praise God for that. Our God is a healer. And he has done it so many times. So many of you in here can testify of God being Jehovah Rapha tonight. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. The ushers are coming forward tonight. We're about to lift our offering and give into the house of the Lord tonight. And Sister Faye, she is coming forward to pray for the offering this evening. Praise the Lord. Good 
night, everyone. We have a full house tonight. God is in this place. <laughs> so there's two ways to give. Envelope in front of you, cash hubs, and go fund me. So let's pray tonight. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We worship you and we adore you. Oh, glorious you are, Father. Oh, wonderful you are. We thank you for providing for us, my God. And we thank you for every gifts and giver tonight. We thank you for tithers, my God. Father, you, everything belongs to you. But you said to bring back a tent into your house. So, Father, we thank you tonight for the one, oh God, who is obedient to your word. So, Lord, bless obedience tonight in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, obedience, oh God. Your word said obedient is better than sacrifice. And Lord, sometimes when we give, we give sacrificially, and you honor that very well. So I thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in this house and in our lives as we obey your word, because your word will not go back void. It will accomplish what we set it out to do. So I thank you to Lord for faithful givers, and we thank you, God, for cheerful givers. We, you give your son to us, oh God, and for that we can say thank you tonight. Bless every gift tonight, and we give you honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God is a good God. Amen. He deserves all the honor, all the glory, all the praise, because he's the most high God. There is none above him. There is none beside him. There is none that can be compared to him, and he will get his praise tonight. Amen. It's good to be in his house. It's good to see you guys. You look cute. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea.
Jesus. Hallelujah. If you have your Bible, let's turn to the book of Acts, chapter 12, verses 13 to 15. When you find that, can you stand with me? Out of respect for the word of the living God. Acts 12, 13 to 15. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, all things are possible in the presence of the living God. And tonight, God is going to visit his people. And if you come to church and you get nothing from this, it's not my fault. And it's not the fault of the person next to you. It's your fault. This could be one of two things. It could be one of the most boring things that you've ever been to. Or it could be one of the most exciting things that you've ever experienced. It's up to you. And I have a feeling that some people are going to really, really enjoy God tonight. Because you're in the presence of the Lord. There's no better place. I know some of you want to be in Cancun and some of you want to be in Europe and wherever right now. Let me tell you, you're in the best place right now. Because right now, there is peace in this room. And there is healing in this house. And there is fullness of joy in this place. Anybody, anybody know what I'm talking about when we talk about peace? Yeah, anybody know what I'm talking about when we talk about joy? Yeah. Anybody know what I'm talking about when we talk about joy? Yeah. Would somebody give God a joyous praise in this house? Yeah. Hallelujah. Acts 12, 13 to 15. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. In other words, girl, you crazy? But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then they said, It is his angel. Amen? It is his angel. Bow your heads. Close your eyes. Father, we give you praise and we give you thanks and we give you honor. We give you glory, O oh God, for Lord, there is none like you in all the earth. Lord, it is an understatement to say that you're a blessing. And Lord, sometimes it feels like an exercise in futility to bless your name. Because the, the word says you are above. Nehemiah declared that you're above every blessing and above every praise. But Lord, even as fallible vessels, we come before you to declare your greatness in the earth and to bless your holy name, O God. To lift you up and to honor you with our lives. And we honor you with more than words, O God. We honor you with our breath and we honor you with our strength. And we honor you, O God, with every aspect, every facet, every single shred, every single molecule of our beings, O God. We give you glory and praise and thanks and honor, O God. I pray that you would let your will be done on earth earth as it is in heaven oh God Lord I pray that your word would come forth with power and authority and every hindrance every stumbling block every worry every every shred of depression I rebuke it I re command it to go every foul demonic spirit that wants to come against the move of God in this house right now we bind it and we cast it down in the name of Jesus Christ oh God I declare that there is liberty in this house I declare that there is freedom in this house Lord I declare that your Holy Ghost is going to move in this place oh God breaking every bar breaking every prison breaking every chain oh God in Sunda in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth Father we thank you for this when all is said and done we will not forget to give you the honor the glory and the praise which you so rightly deserve in Jesus name I pray amen 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 before you have your seat turn to the person closest to you and tell them call me crazy did they listen to you? Did they call you crazy? Do we have any crazy people in the house? Do we have any mad people in the house, insane people? You must be losing your mind. You know, I remember reading a little, um, a little story uh, of a man who went to Israel with his family. Of course, his mother-in-law was there. And while they were on this trip to Israel, his mother-in-law died. And when they took her to the, I mean, you know, when he was talking to the, like, the coroner people and the, um, the undertaker guy, he said, listen, 
he said to ship your mother-in-law back home to the U.S., it will cost you $5,000. And he said, but if you want to bury her here in Israel, it will cost you $150. He looked without hesitating and he said, ship my mother-in-law back home to the U.S. And the man said, you must really love your mother-in-law. He said, no. 2,000 years ago, a man was buried here. And after three days, he rose from the dead. I'm not taking any chances. <laughs> Sounds a little bit mean, right? <laughs> I ain't taking no chances for this, you know, woman to raise again from the dead. A lot of people, they have expectations. And a lot of their expectations are not based in reality. And none more so than you. Your expectations, according to the world, they are not based in reality. You crazy people are expecting some man to descend from heaven in the sky. Have you ever seen anything like that? No, you have not. But yet, we have people who would say, you, you people are crazy. You people are crazy because you believe a man built a big boat and he put animals in the boat and, and they survived in that boat. Right? And then, and then he repopulated the earth with animals and he repopulated the earth with his family. You people are crazy to believe that a man, he was in the belly of a whale for three days and three nights and he lived. Right? You people are crazy to believe that. I mean, it sounds ridiculous when you think about it. But when you look at what the world is saying, the world tells you that everything came from nothing. Which is crazier. Yeah, the world tells you that there are some of the brightest minds in, on our planet who believe in panspermian theory. You know what? Aliens came and they, with some with um, sperm-like spores, populated the earth. Lord have mercy. I, I will take my chance with a big boat and a guy in it. I will take my chances with the guy sleeping in the belly of a whale. Why? Because when men try to invent, invent things outside the reality of God, it sounds plain or ridiculous. And people don't stop to think it. And when we start to become skeptical and we start to, we start to kind of try to dissect and, and to abuse and to reject the word of God, you will believe anything. And that's the truth. One man said, I know that, that you know, you could not believe in God, but if you don't believe in God, what on earth will you believe in? And when we look at what men do when they don't believe in God, it's, it borderlines on plain or ridiculous. So the world will look at you and they will look at your beliefs and what you are convinced about and what you are convicted about and they're going to say that you're crazy. But it doesn't matter. Why? Because I believe that the word of God is truth and Satan is the prince of this world and Satan is the father of lies and a lot of the things that he brings in, is, uh, they are lies in its very nature. Every day Satan lies to you and he tells you that you're depressed and he tells you that you're upset and he tells you that you're foolish and he tells you that you're ugly and he tells you that no one loves you when the truth of the matter is God loves you you don't need anybody else on the planet to love you as long as God loves you I don't know why you sit down and you believe the father of lies every single day I don't know about you but I believe in the truth and the truth is not just a thing that is subjective the truth is the very person of God himself he said I am the way I am the truth and I am the life now, where I read from, Herod had James, the brother of John, killed with the sword. And the Bible said it pleased the Jews so greatly that James was dead because he was, I mean, James was a powerful preacher. I think in all the apostles, James would have probably been the most outspoken one. He didn't mince words and he came out. Anybody ever read James? Yeah, he was, he was, a, he was a, a man. He was a preacher. Right? And they hated him and they killed James and the Jews loved it. And they said, Herod is great for doing it. So he, he said, imagine if I kill the head honcho, Peter, he's the boss. If I kill him, how much would they love me? So he proceeded to go and arrest Peter. And he put four squads of soldiers to watch Peter. That's at least 16 soldiers. Watching one little man. Peter's not an old man. Peter's a youngish man. Right? And he is, he is in the midst of the deepest, darkest prison. And he has soldiers all around him. Because these Christian people are getting a reputation for being able to walk out of prisons easily. 
Yeah. All of you Christians should still have that reputation now. You walk out of tight spots very easily. Why? Because your God said, I will go before you and break in pieces the gates of brass. He said, I will cut in sunder the bars of iron. Let me tell you something. The enemy might be wanting to come against you with insurmountable odds and you may think that you're facing the impossible. But your God is the God of the impossible. You stand up in the name of Jesus and don't just expect God to deliver. Expect Him to do it easily. Why? Because the Bible declares it is but a light thing in the eyes of God. You're facing the devourer. God will put him down easily. Why? Because it's easy for God to do. I wish I had a few anointed people in here with me tonight because I'm about, I'm about to preach. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, so Peter is subsequently arrested. He's thrown in prison and he would be executed after the Passover. Peter is arrested, put in the darkest prison. What does Peter do while he's sitting in the deepest, darkest prison, surrounded by soldiers, all with shields and spears and armor? He's standing there. Peter does this. He begins to take off his jacket. Mm -hmm. Don't make a preacher take off his jacket. Because when a preacher takes off his jacket, he's going to go sleep. Trust me. I do that every Sunday. Yeah. And he folds his clothes neatly. And remember this man is shackled. And he forms a pillow with it. And he lays down. And he goes to sleep. That is psychotic. That's crazy. I'm preaching. Call me crazy. Yeah, and he goes to sleep. Wait, wait, wait. Would you be sleeping like a baby? Would you be sleeping like a baby if you knew tomorrow that you were going to be executed? You're a dead man walking. Would you be sleeping? As a matter of fact, if you have a cold, you can't sleep. Peter's about to die and he's knocked out. It didn't take him 10 seconds. He lay down there and he's like... And the soldiers are probably looking at him like, what's wrong with this guy? He's going to die tomorrow. And he's acting like nothing's going on. Well, Peter, he's between the guards. They shackle him and he's sleeping. Now, Peter is known to be a sleeper. He's known to be a sleeper. Yeah, Peter was sleeping on the Mount of Transfiguration. Go read it. Yeah, and Peter was sleeping in the Garden of Gethsemane. If Jesus didn't divinely intervene, this guy would have slept through all the important things. Yeah, like some of you. On Sunday morning. Yeah. So, so, but Peter, he's now sleeping, but he's sleeping right. There's wrong sleep and there's right sleep. Peter is sleeping right. The Bible says in the Garden of Gethsemane, Peter was sleeping for sorrow. Read it. It's there. I didn't make that up. Yeah, he was trying to escape his problem, so he tried to sleep. Yeah, he was trying to escape things. So he's saying, if I go to sleep, I wouldn't have to face it. But this time, Peter isn't sleeping for sorrow. Peter is taking a book out of the page of his God because his God was the one who was sleeping in the boat while there was a storm. Any of you could sleep in the midst of a storm? I've been there, done that. My first hurricane ever was when I came to Florida. And I live on an island. My first hurricane ever, when I came to Florida, I'm like, girl, I was telling Denise, I was like, you know what? I can't take it anymore. I'm waiting for this thing to come and it's not coming. I'm going to sleep. And I said, Lord, if it comes, at least let the rain hit the window right there so I could hear it. Not that I want to be awoke, awakened. I love when rain falls. In my country, we have, all our roofs are not made of shingles. All our roofs are tin roofs, uh, galvanized roofs that you, you, that you charge more for. Right? And, and when we hear the rain falling on the roof, it's almost therapeutic. And I miss that. I really miss that. So I said, Lord, if it's your will, let the rain hit against the, the panes of the windows. And let me hear the rain. And all, all of a sudden, before I could sleep away, I had right on the windows, right next to my bed. I was like, thank you, Lord. And I'm out. Why? If my God could sleep in the middle of a storm, guess what? I could sleep in the middle of a storm. And that's exactly what Peter was doing. Peter was like, they're going to kill me, but it doesn't matter because I know in whom I believe. And I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. If I die, I die. If I perish, I perish. If I breathe my last breath, if I close my eyes, I know that I will open it before God. I will cast my gaze upon him whom my soul loveth. I will see him whom my heart desires. I will be walking with the one that I live for. What point is there in fearing death? No point. I don't understand why Christian people are afraid of death. 
Because for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Yeah, this, the die is gain. In other words, I come out. I come out. You know, I, one, one, I can't remember who it was told me because I said the other day, you know, God going to take me out first. I think it was, I think it was Diego. Diego was like, Pastor, you're not going anywhere and stop talking about dying. Yeah, that was Diego. Yeah, he said, stop talking about dying. And people always say, well, that's kind of irresponsible. What if you die? What's going to happen with Petal? I mean, Denny's and the kids. Right? I was like, I tell her, say if I die here, marry a very, very rich man. I'll live happily ever after. Yeah, do your thing. She's like, I don't want anybody else. I said, that's a good answer. Say it while I'm alive. When I'm dead, it doesn't matter. Yeah, good answer. Yeah, but guess what? If God sees it fit to take me out, wouldn't he see it fit to take care of them? Well, everything is not God, God, God. No, no, everything is not God, God, God for you. Everything is God, God, God for me. When I get up in the morning, it's Jesus. Yeah, when I, when, I, when I go into the washroom in the morning, it's Jesus. When I sit down to study in the morning, it's Jesus. When I pray, it's Jesus. When Denise gets up and comes and sits on my lap, it's Jesus. It's all Jesus. Every single moment, every single day. When I'm fishing, it's Jesus. When I'm on the phone, it's Jesus. When I'm negotiating, it's Jesus. Why? Because every single day that we live, every single breath that we breathe, it's from God. Yeah, you might not see it that way, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So Peter, he's sleeping and he slept well. Many of us sleep for the right reasons and some people sleep for the wrong reasons. If you're sleeping for the wrong reasons, I need to say to you, arise, shine, for the light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen amongst you. Amen? This time, however, brother Peter is getting the right sleep because he learned from Jesus. So the Bible said... That Peter was sleeping and the angel of God comes into the prison. Now check this out. Huh? And Peter is sleeping so good. The, the prison lights up. The angel is standing in front of Peter. The darkness was illuminated. Everything that was hidden was now revealed. And Peter was like... Not even the angel could wake him up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, 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 some of you know getting that. Some of you know getting that. How many of you know that even an angel can't steal the peace that God has given you? How many of you know that nothing from heaven or hell or on the earth could steal the joy that you found in God? I wish I had a few anointed people in here with me. The enemy will come to try to steal it. If the angels can't steal it, no devil could steal it. And he will try. But the Bible said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The enemy will come against you like a flood. But our God will raise up a standard against him every single time. So he will come to try to steal your peace. Peter wasn't getting up. Peter is sleeping. Let me get Peter. Come on. Filipino Peter. Filipino Peter, PT. Yeah. Sucking his thumb. That was, that's what the Filipinos do. Yeah. And the angel of the Lord comes. Oh, you want, the, you want the sound to go with it? All right, everybody help me do the angel sound. One, two, three. You guys are so re <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> I didn't hear any angel sounds on the back. Let's do it again. One, two, three. All hail. That couldn't wake him up. Man, yeah, the devil comes to tell you you have, you, you have cancer. He comes to tell you that you have Diabetes, you can't sleep at night. He come and tell you you have gas. Your wife can't sleep at night. All sorts of stuff he comes with. Don't let the enemy steal your sleep. Somebody who touch your neighbor, tell him sleep. But dude, tomorrow the bank is coming to take your house and you sleeping. You crazy. 
You never thought sleep could have been crazy, right? Yeah, what do you want me to do? To awake and, and worry over it? I don't worry, I war. Yeah, I don't sit there and pine and dwell in my insecurity and my depression and my sorrow. I war against the enemy. And one of the ways that I war, I take up my problem. I lay it at the foot of the cross and I go to sleep. Because I know that he that keepeth me shall neither slumber nor sleep. God's got it ready. God don't sleep, so you could sleep. God's got it now, take a rest. Somebody touch your neighbor, tell them take a rest. What are you fighting about? What are you pining and whining about? It's... Well, you don't understand, Pastor Jay, all the bad things that they said about me. You could say whatever you want. It doesn't make a difference. Somebody embarrassed you on the job, and I've had people try to embarrass me all the time. I don't care. I'm a walking embarrassment. Yeah, every single time I preach, I embarrass myself. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Why? Because I do this for the honor and the glory of God. I don't care if you like how I preach or not. When I go home and I sit down and I reevaluate what I've just said before God, if God is pleased with it, I'm pleased with it. That's the bottom line. I don't care if you agree with it or not. Why? Because as long as God agrees, I rather please God than please men. And this is what you need to understand. If you're walking in the spirit, then you're going to please God. If you're following after God, then you're going to do what is right. If you're not following after God, then everything is questionable. But if your mind is stayed on God, you will have one way. It's straight, it's narrow, and you walk it. A double-minded man is on stable in all his ways yeah anything that causes you to dwell between two opinions is not from God folks it's not from God and this man is so asleep we need a few Peters in the church not people who are asleep to God but who could rest in the middle of the turmoil because right now we're coming into a place where there is turmoil yeah and there we, we are in that place already when you're watching our brothers being being you know, murdered and stabbed and killed, you know, for this gospel's sake. Yeah, all in the name of religion. Yeah, and, and in, pro in the name of progressivism. When they try to shut you up, let me tell you something. We're not living in an ordinary world anymore. Things have changed. What does that mean? That we can't, we can't find rest? We rest in Jesus. I heard one man say this and I like it. He said... Some people say that we have to keep the Sabbath. I keep the Sabbath better than anybody else. Why? He said because there are two Sabbaths. There's God's Sabbath and there's man's Sabbath. The Bible said that in six days God created everything. On the seventh day there was rest. God rested. Why he needed rest? Why did God rest? Because he looked at everything that he created and he saw it was good. In other words, there's nothing else to do. Let me rest. But he also did an example to us. So what the Jews had to do, they had to mimic they had to honor the rest that God did. So the Sabbath of the Jews is an expression of honoring the Sabbath of God. I don't embrace the Sabbath of man. I embrace the Sabbath of God. The Sabbath of God said this. Come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. This is not a legalistic thing. This is a very practical thing. The man who's honoring the Sabbath of God could sleep in the middle of the storm. Because you find your rest in Christ. Mm -mm -mm. And the angel comes and he's standing there. And brother Peter. Brother Peter doesn't want to get up. He doesn't want to get up. Read your Bible. Not making this up. The Bible said that the angel did this. And then he got up. The angel smote him on the side. And he's like, huh? And you know what's the first thing the angel said to him? He said, Peter, put on your clothes. Gird yourself. He puts his stuff on. Because it's time to get out of here. Yeah. Why? Why is God doing this? Because God ain't done with Peter. Why is Peter so comfortable? Why isn't he worrying? Well, my Bible tells me in the book of John. Let me see if I have that scripture somewhere. I'm not sure if I have it. But let me see if I can find it and read it for you. 
John 21, 18. It says, verily, verily, I say unto you. Now this is Jesus speaking to Peter before he ascended into heaven. When thou was young, thou girdest thyself. You put your clothes on and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands. And another shall gird thee and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. Verse 8, 19 goes on to say, this was Jesus telling Peter how he would die. Check it out. So the angel comes to him and says, gird yourself. But Jesus said to Peter, he said, when you were young, you gird yourself. He said, but when you are old, another will gird you. And they will grab you by the hand. Because when you're young, you go wherever you want. But when you're old, they will grab you and take you to a place that you don't want to go. Which is to the cross. Right? Yeah. Peter knew. This ain't my time. You could do what you want. Herod could make whatever plans he wants. But I know what Jesus said about me. How many of you know what Jesus said about you? You see, you don't know what Jesus said about you. Because you don't read the word. And when you do read the word, the devil convinces you that word is not for you. Oh, that word is for the Jews. No, that word is for Brother Nick because he holy. I'm just here. I'm just doing stuff. That word is not for me. That's a lie of the devil. Every, when, when I was a kid, we used to sing a song. Every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, every line. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah, if God wants to give the Jews it, I say, Lord, I take some of it too. I want some of that too. I want some of the Jews' juice. Whatever you pour out for them, you could pour into me because the God that the Jews serve is the God that I serve. As a matter of fact, I know him a little better than they do right now because they don't know the God's Messiah. They don't know the Son of God that came down on the earth. But I know him. I know that he died. I know that he rose again from the dead. I know that he's coming back. Somebody touch your neighbor. Tell him he's coming back. Yeah. So if you know what God said about you, well, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Yeah, I know it. I know it. Anybody hearing me? So Peter girded himself. And he started to walk out. The weirdest thing is, Peter didn't know if this was real or not. He wasn't sure if this was, if this was reality. I was like, man, isn't that life? Isn't that the life of a child of God? Where every day you live, it seems so surreal. Some people don't get it. God's, your supernatural is God's natural. Yeah. What you call supernatural is natural for God. And if you're attached to God, then your natural becomes supernatural. People miss that. Now when you're attached to God and you begin to live in God's reality, which is the supernatural, people are going to say you crazy. You crazy. Doesn't matter. Because I'm walking in the reality of God. What is the reality of God? Well, you know, diabetes is a thing. And it's going to kill you. But don't worry about it. Because you know God. No, no, no. You don't understand. Jehovah Rapha. That's my reality. Yeah. I am never without hope. I could be on my deathbed. I still hope in Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I tell you guys all the time, if I'm on my, on, my, on my deathbed, surround my bed and cry a lot. But I want to warn you from now. While you're doing that, I might be like, Tracy, just step aside. You might be blocking him. Yeah. Romar, move, move, move your head to the left. I'm just making sure that, it, that the Lord not, not not here yet. Why? Because even on my deathbed, I expect God. As a matter of fact, that's what we expect the most. But, you know, that's what we expect. Every single day you live, you should expect God. 
and people will call you crazy but it doesn't matter why because we expect God we don't have ordinary expectations some of you expect um, a pension some of you expect a raise some of you expect sickness because daddy had it and granddaddy had it and great granddaddy had it so I must have it too some of you expect to be bald No, I had to call that. Why? Because I want to show you where your expectation lies. You know, at the end of the day, we have expectations and the enemy will always come to try to make you fall into a line of expectation based on non-reality. So Peter is now following the angel and Peter is thinking that he's dreaming. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. Anyone of you had nice, clear, vivid dreams? And you're in the dream and you're thinking, man, I don't want this to end. I wish I could stay in this dream. Anybody ever been there? That's the life of a Christian. <laughs> Some of you are like, what? Why? Because we have divine, supernatural expectation. That's why the world is trying to make fun of you or try to blast you for your faith. Because your faith is the key to the impossible. But I've told you a hundred times, we've based all of our existence on a little bit of all the matter that exists. Only 4% is visible. The other 96% of matter is invisible. And we think that a spiritual realm exists inside the physical realm. When the truth is our physical realm exists within the supernatural realm. In, 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 inside of the spiritual realm. The demonic spirits outnumber man at least 6,000 to 1. And the angels outnumber them at least 2 to 1. I want to answer, ask you a question. Who has more power? Who has more backing? I like how Elisha said it. They that are with us are more than they that are with them. We have greater power on the earth. I'm not talking about when we get to heaven. I'm talking about on the earth. If God wants to heal you now, he's going to heal you now. If God wants to deliver you now, he will deliver you now. But first you have to walk in it. You have to walk in it. God is going to come into somebody's life tonight and he's going to come in like a dream and he's going to bring you joy that you never knew you had. It's joy unspeakable, full of glory. It's something that is so far advanced, something that is so great, something that is so big. You're going to say, no, 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 this can't be real. But guess what? That's how our God rolls. He's bigger than anything that you can imagine. Our God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think according to the power that we worketh in you he's able to do it I don't understand why Christians expect so little man yeah the angel starts walking he starts following and he's walking through the doors the gates are opening by themselves and he's walking through them oh you think you're a self-made millionaire follow God yeah well you don't know how hard I work to get here you could even tie your own shoelace if God didn't intervene that's a folly of mankind. I got where I am. I pull myself up by my bootstraps. Spell bootstraps. No, show me what a bootstrap is. Peter walks out of the prison. He comes outside. The angel disappears. And then he's like, dang son. Surely the angel of the Lord had visited me. Duh. <laughs> You're outside now, Peter. Thank you, Captain Obvious. You like Jazzy. Somebody messed with my fishing rod one day. Me and Jazzy and the boys went fishing. And I'm like, what is this? He said, a fishing rod. <laughs> I said, thank you, Captain Obvious. Peter was stating the obvious. So surely the angel of the Lord had visited me. So Peter goes to where he knows his people are. And his people, his congregation is in the house 
praying. They're praying. Come quick, come quick, come quick. They form a circle and they're praying. And Peter comes to the door while they're praying. Come now, I didn't ask you to pray in Presbyterian. I said, pray in. They make some noise and they, like the weirdos do. The crazy people do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they're really getting into prayer now. And he knocks on the door. And the Bible says a little girl called Rhoda comes to the door. There's only one girl there. <laughs> she doesn't open the door. She says, who is it? Who is it? It's Peter. Peter didn't sound like that. <laughs> That's a Filipino Peter. It's Peter. Say, it is I, Peter. It is I, Peter. She's like, what? What? And she runs back. She's like, guys, Peter is here. See, I read the scripture. These guys didn't pay attention to what I read. They did not pay any attention to what I read. The Bible said that the guys, the people, they looked at the little girl and they said, girl, you crazy. Why? Because we know that Peter is in prison. There's no way for him to escape. Now remember, they're praying for Peter to be released. Any of you ever prayed for something and you're praying for it, but you don't really expect it to happen, but you're praying for it anyway? I don't know why you people do that, but guess what? If you're praying, expect God. I'm tired of people in the church with low expectations. We need some people with big expectations. Yeah, we, we don't just need to ask God for $1.4 million. We need to ask God for $20 million. Because God could do more than we could ever anticipate. Anybody hearing me? Yeah, don't just ask God to heal your cancer. Say, God, I want you to take this away and never, ever, ever let it return again in the name of Jesus. Yeah, so she's trying to tell them, Peter's outside. Girl, you crazy. Come on, come on, actors. You guys are like so. The Bible said she, keep, she kept on telling them. And she kept affirming that Peter's outside. Where's Peter? He's outside waiting. He's like, guys, guys, keep going. Preach it to them. Preach it to them. Keep going. That's our way to do it. Preach it to them. Come on, guys. Lord have mercy. All right, let me be Rhoda. You're doing a good job. Good job. Right? And I want you to be, you know, a little more boisterous. You ain't given much to work with. Right? You guys need acting lessons. Right? Yeah, especially you. At least it's a he trying. Right? And he's naturally a nice guy. And if he was saying it in Spanish, then it would be better. Right? So you could do it in Spanish. Guys, Peter's outside. No, no, no. I'm telling you he's outside. No. Tell me I'm crazy. crazy. Peter's outside. No, you're crazy. No, you're crazy. no, no, really, really. He, Peter is outside. Dude, what are you laughing at? Peter's outside. You know what? I don't care what you say because Peter's outside. I'm telling you Peter's outside. I said Peter is outside. Mm. Peter's outside. You can say what you want, but I believe that Peter's outside. I didn't see it, but I heard his voice. Yeah, I didn't see him yet, but I know that Peter's outside. It doesn't matter what you say. I'm going to give God a crazy praise anyway. You can call me crazy. You can call me mad. You can call me a lunatic. But I know the God that I serve. You see, I know that my God is a good God. I know that my God is able. I know that my God is able to break the prison bars. I know that he's able to take me out. I know that my God is, is a God of the impossible. 
Somebody touch your neighbor, tell them Peter's outside. Respond to them, say you crazy. Yeah, what are you going to do then? We're going to keep praising God anyway. I need some people in the house with a crazy praise. I need some people in the house, even though even the people in the church would be telling you that that's not the way you keep going anyway. Why? Because I know that I met my Jesus. I know when I was down, he took me up. I know when I was depressed, he gave me joy unspeakable. Whoa. I was about to preach so hard tonight by feeling it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Bible said when Peter came to his senses, he came to the house, he spoke to the girl. The girl went inside. And, 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 and we had a bunch of typical Christians battling with a little girl. Yeah. God orchestrated it in such a way that the person who had to find Peter or to hear Peter was a child. Why? Because in order for this to manifest, we had to have faith. The stalwarts are praying, but they don't believe it. But the child did. That's why she was the one who found him. That's why the Bible says, unless you become like one of these. Some of you sitting in this place, and you think you're too big for God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have people who more, who more in tune with their doctrine. Than their God. Mm -hmm. If you offend me. In doctrine. I can't hear you. But a little child. You know what we call them? We call them ADHD. We call them lunatic. We call them gullible. We call them innocent. We call them undeveloped. They're not developed enough. To make. Adult decision, except for when they want to change the sex. That's a new thing now. Because even a baby could do it, you know. Yeah. Instead of the baby go, oh, the baby go, ah, oh, we know we're going out with him. Yeah. But yet God chooses the littlest one who doesn't know much. Sometimes the things that you know is a hindrance to your faith. Oh, you're not getting this, you know. You're stuffing your head all day with social media. You sit down and watching TV all day, stuffing your head with a bunch of things and you don't realize that it's breaking the very faith that is in you. I see a new social media campaign. They're just bashing people who are speaking in tongues. Oh, this is the face of a Pentecostal when they find out that the tongues that they're speaking is not real. Yeah, well, you do what you do, you, you do you, call me crazy, but I will keep on speaking in the heavenly language. Why? Because for some strange reason, when I'm talking to God, I feel peace. And when I talk to God, he fills me up. When I talk to God in a heavenly tongue, I feel the glory of God surrounding me. So call me innocent, call me gullible, call me crazy. I will give God a crazy praise. Yeah, say what you will, but my expectation is divine and my expectation is great than you can ever imagine yeah it's bigger so we need some people to approach God with childlike faith unless you become a one of these you will never enter into the kingdom of God she went out and she met and she she didn't see Peter because she forgot to open the door for Peter some of us are so busy rejoicing that we forget to open the door for the miracle to walk in that's all right because it's gonna get in somehow yeah, so we had one little girl battling all the religious stalwarts. All the sawatis and them, all the big boys and them. Yeah, they stand up there and they're looking all proud, you know, because hallelujah. Well, according to biblical theology, you know, it's the, it's the natural format of prayer as outlined in the scripture. When the truth is that baby don't know how to pray, she just said, Lord, I believe in you. Yeah, she doesn't have to get the right exegesis and she has to get the right theological formula in order for your prayer to be answered by God. No, you just come to God with a broken and a contrite heart. While all these people are praying from the head, the baby is praying from the heart. And when she goes to God, God said, okay, because you believe that Peter is coming home, I'm going to bring Peter home. I wouldn't be surprised if the angel of God appeared just because this one was praying right. But guess what? When you see a join yourself to the people who are praying right, they're gonna rub off on you sometimes and you're gonna get to experience their miracle don't ever think that it's by your prayer alone 
Man, I've been in church all my life and I've heard people all the time. They try to take credit for what God is doing. And I was feeling so ill and I came to church and Pastor Jay prayed, huh? and, it, and it was cool and everything, but the pain came back. But when I went home and I lay my hands on myself, hallelujah, shoulder bow, and I begin to feel the Holy Ghost. What are you trying to do there? You're just trying to show that you are a, a, a prayer warrior and you have great faith. When the truth is, I'm not the only one praying for you. There's a brother there praying for you. And there's a little girl there praying for you. And because we agree together, the Bible says anything that we pray for agreeing, it will be accomplished in the name of God. This is not the time for one man to stick his head up to try to be above everybody else. But this is a time when the church must join its faith together. And when they call one crazy, they call all crazy. When they call one one mad they call all mad but while they're saying what they're saying we're seeing the miracles of God the Bible said that we will do exploits in the name of Jesus mm -hmm. so when you're doing it do it crazy yeah if the world likes what you're doing something wrong mm -hmm. something is wrong yeah oh my gosh I love the devotion. I love, I love how that church does it. The music was on point and the atmosphere was just right. That worries me a little bit. I want when you see a community church on a Sunday morning, Hope FLA, you walk out like, oh, that people crazy. You see that little white girl up in the front? Lord have mercy, something wrong with her. She does this slow song and she's still jumping. Yeah. And you see the tall guy with the big forehead? He crying for the whole thing. What is he crying about? That's crazy. And Sanchez? I don't know what's wrong with Sanchez. He just, he's insane. What is wrong with these young people? Why are they here on Wednesday night? And then they're showing up on Friday night. And then they show up on Sunday for the two services. Not all of them, some of them. Yeah, but they're showing up on Sunday for the two services. What is wrong with them? They're crazy. You don't understand. We don't just attend church crazy. We live crazy. Our praise is crazy. Crazy praise. Mm -hmm. Crazy praise. We have crazy faith. Unrealistic expectations. It's unrealistic for you. Very realistic for me. Because I believe God could do anything. So why didn't your God do it yet? Psh, ask him, don't ask me, but I believe in him. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I don't need your help to believe. I don't need. But if you see, we come together and we believe. And we encourage each other in the faith. What? What could the enemy do to stop us? Here's the problem. We're busy in the church judging each other. I don't like how that guy does praise. Psh, you know, you know. Um, Danny Boy's background, you know where he come from? Psh, if I tell you. And all the gossipers inside here right now like. <laughs> and I was just drawing an example. Yeah. I ever tell you about Sachi? Oh, Lord. Lord have mercy. Let me tell you a little bit about Jadu. <laughs> oh, Lord, Jadu behind the camera. Well, that's the end of it. Yeah. Let me tell you about JP. JP have a pass. And you sit down there judging everybody like you're perfect. Yeah. You're not perfect. We all have things in the past. Nobody here is perfect. But when you see this fella jumping up and down like he retarded. Like he lost his mind. You're trying to figure out what's going on with him. Remember, you don't know where he came from. And you can account for his gratitude and his gratefulness to God. You know where God brought you from. You, God pulled you out of the slum. He pulled you out of addiction. Yeah, he pulled you away from death. Certain death. He pulled you away from roaming the streets. And they expect you to sit down and do like this. Hallelujah. Eh? That's what you expect from me? You don't know where God brought me from. Every time I think about the Lord, 
how he saved me how he raised me how he filled me with the Holy Ghost how he healed me to the uttermost it makes me wonder it makes me want to give God glory it makes me want to give God praise and it might look a little bit crazy it, uh, could I preach to you a little more? I get a connection card recently. They tell me I preached too long. I don't want to call no names. But I'll tell you this now. You watch it, man. You watch, man. He said, Pastor Jay, you preached too long. I think he was just writing my thing. But are, are you are guys ready for this? I will not be silent. Behold, I have set watchmen upon the wall and they shall give him no rest day or night until he establish his word. Yeah, I will not be silent. I will give God the praise that is due unto his name. That is what we came to do. Anybody hearing me? Guess what? God delivered some of you from some crazy places and you don't want to give him a crazy praise. You have to give him a praise that is warranted for where he brought you from. So guess what? If God delivered you from depression, you're going to give God what? No, 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 hold on. You're good, good. Hallelujah, I'm happy now, joy. Joy. And we can't even tell that. Let me tell you something. When God delivers you from something, He does it abundantly. He gives you joy that is unspeakable. Joy that overflows like a river. Some of you were in turmoil. Some of you were in, in, in internal anxiety. You had war within you, raging day and night. That's anxiety. And then God gave you peace. Peace. God gave you peace. That is all understanding you don't even know why you're so at peace you want me to sit there and be silent no some of you God delivered you from religion and religion told you that you had to stay in your lane sit down in your pew until we call you but no God set you free and he that the son makes free it's free indeed do we have anybody in here who God set you free we didn't come to serve a religion. We didn't come to serve a man. We didn't come to serve a system. We didn't even come to serve a church. We came to serve our God. We came to serve the Lord our God most high. That's why we're free. So if I give God a crazy praise, don't judge me. If God had broken the... If God broke the chains, why are, why are your hands still restrained? If God broke the handcuffs, why are your hands still restrained? If God broke the chains, then you can lift up holy hands. Peter's feet were in shackles. If the shackles remain, he couldn't walk out of the prison. Guess what? God broke your shackles. Now it's time for you to walk. Wheresoever the soles of your feet were tread, that land will I give unto you. Uh -huh. Somebody watch your neighbor tell them, watch me walk. Watch me walk. I'm about to take a little walk. Why? Because for a long time I couldn't do it. For the long time I was in prison. For a long time I was held in captivity. But my God has broken the prison bars. My God said I will go before you and break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. Yeah, they told you you can't sing and you got saved. And you still can't sing. God didn't work that miracle. But guess what? You're singing anyway. Mm -hmm. You know how much time I want to tell Maria? Maria is up on a little tambourine. But guess what? She's free. Yeah, she come in and she... Yeah, I was like, Lord. Oh, she threw it more flawed. Yeah. But she's still doing she little tambourine thing. By the way, do bring your tambourine. Play it home. Yeah, but you're free. No, you want me to come into church after God set me free and broke the chains. Yeah, I have this stupid looking smile on my face. I couldn't do that for the longest while. I used to sit down home and sulk. I couldn't even make ends meet. And now God is doing what God is doing. And you want me to sit there like, no, no, I'm free. Anybody free? Yeah. Well, this is Freedom Night. I don't want people, I don't want people to call your praise crazy. I want them to call you crazy. 
I want your praise to be incomprehensible to the world. I don't know why this dude is jumping the way he's jumping. I watched him for his wedding. Praising, he didn't praise God like that in, in church. But it's for his wedding, he's like doing his thing. Yeah. I wasn't sure if he was praising God or he was like, yeah, Lord, I'm married now. Look out, Lydia, come in. But Lydia wasn't even close to him. His hands were up and he was giving God glory. And his family looking at him like, what has become of our little innocent Tyler? Brainwashed, crazy, it doesn't matter. I'm free. Tonight, you have to ask yourself, does your faith reflect your freedom? Does your praise reflect, reflect your faith? Yes, pastor. Don't tell me. I don't want to hear it. I want to see it. Yeah. Because crazy faith breeds crazy praise. Crazy praise is you praise God before you even get the thing that you're praying for. Yeah. Crazy faith is you're praying for a thing and when you get it, you have to look at the little girl and say, you crazy. That's crazy faith. You don't understand that these little men and, all, and these little people, they were praying against the biggest empire on the planet to free little Peter. Think about that. And you can't pray for a raise. <laughs> Come on. We need some people with crazy faith in the church. Do we have any crazy people today? Somebody watch your neighbor. Tell them just call me crazy. Father, I praise you. I lift you up. I magnify your name, Lord. For you alone are worthy. You alone are righteous. You alone are holy. And I thank you for all the people that are here. Oh God, and I thank you for your word. Lord, we give you praise. And I thank you for what you're doing and what you're about to do in us. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I thank you for every opportunity. And I thank you for every door that is opened in the name of Jesus. Tonight, if you're not saved and you want to be saved, you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your God, you want freedom. You want God to set you free. And you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your God, I want you to show me by lifting your hand. Lift up your hand where I can see it. I'm going to ask God to save you. Is there anyone like that in here tonight? Hallelujah. I see that hand there. Praise God. Praise God. Is there anybody else? You want to lift that hand up for Jesus? Lift it up and say to him, I see that hand there. Praise God. Is there one more? You could put it down now, son. Is there one more? You want to lift that hand for God and you want to say to him, Lord, I want to receive you into my existence, into my heart, into my life. Anybody else? Hallelujah. Praise God. The two young men that lifted your hands, I want you to come. I want to pray with you quickly. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. I don't want you guys to answer this little prayer after me. I want you to say, Lord Jesus. I've heard you and you're calling me. Say it out loud. And you're calling me. Oh Lord, I know I'm a sinner. Wash away my sins. Because I believe in you. I believe you died on the cross. I believe that you rose again on the third day to give me life. So I pray, oh God, that you would forgive me of all my sins. And today I declare that you are my God and I am your child in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that you will touch Garrett, oh God, from the crown of the head to the soles of his feet. Lord, you're going to do some crazy stuff in this young man. And I thank you for it, oh God. Lord, some of the things, some of the energy that he had in his life, oh God. Lord, I pray that you would multiply it and he would use it for the kingdom, oh God. That he would be bold, he would be fearless, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I thank you, Father, and I lift you up and I exalt your name. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Hallelujah.
you guys. Hallelujah. If you need a healing in the body, I want you to come. Hallelujah. Pastor Jay prayed for these people to be healed. I want Hope FLA Church praying for these people to be healed. And let us agree together. There is no sickness that is too small or too big for God to heal. I've seen God raise the dead, folks. So God can do anything. So I want you to stretch your hands towards these. If you want to stand tonight, I want you to stand and let us call upon the name of the Lord, Father. And I want God, the Holy Spirit of God, to search these, these people out, oh God. Search these physical bodies out. And in the name of Jesus, bring a complete healing to every single one of them. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you and I pray, oh God, that you would touch this young man, oh God. From the crown of the head to the soles of the feet. And there is a complete healing in his body. In the name of Jesus. I rebuke every spirit of infirmity and I command it to go in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nick, would you just go to the back and bring me a little cup of water or two, two of those. Father, I thank you, oh God. Touch the sister. Let your healing virtue flow. on the master
is a touch from you. Lord, I'm standing. touch from Jesus when you lift your hands tonight father I pray that you would touch these people oh God fill them up oh God to overflow in my God in the name of Jesus let the beauty of God and the blessings of God flow down my God from the top of their head to the soles of the feet in the name of Jesus hallelujah Lord hallelujah Lord Jesus we praise your name my God we thank you father we bless your name my God Open up the gates and heaven on in. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates and heaven on in. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Shall God do it again tonight? Oh, you'll do it again. Rest on us. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates and heaven on in. Come rest on us. So calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart. presence of the Lord is in this place would you just give him a few minutes and for the next 10 seconds would you give God a crazy praise in this house hallelujah yeah fill your people my God lift up your hands and give God glory fire and wind come and do it Open up the gates and heaven on in. Come rest on us. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Heaven on in. Rest on your people tonight. Sing it. Calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart bound. When you feel it's through. Jesus Give somebody a reason to call you crazy tonight Give somebody a reason to call you crazy tonight Oh, we need some crazy faith Crazy praise We thank you, Jesus We praise your name, my God Woo! We thank you, Lord we thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't forget we have Savon Friday night. 
Hallelujah. Keep your eyes on the screen. Hallelujah. Monday night prayer. If you want to hear something from the Lord, 